A warm welcome to today's talk, Saturday the 17th of December. Now, I'd been reading about this article in the popular press and on various social media places about a study which purported to show that people that were unvaccinated against COVID-19 were 72% more likely to be involved in a traffic accident. Now, I just assumed that this was a joke, um, but it actually turns out it's not. Uh, when I actually looked into it, it turns out that this is actually based on something that's purported uh, to be a scientific paper. Uh, and here it is. It comes largely from workers in Toronto, and it's published in the American Journal of Medicine, and it's a full scientific paper. Absolutely quite uh, incredible. And, uh, for example, here, here they're pointing out that uh, people that are, have uh, no vaccine get more accidents than people that have had the, uh, the vaccine over a period of, of a month. Um, this is not a, a joke. This is actually purported to be a genuine scientific paper. And I really feel that these authors and the American Journal of uh, Medicine have done themselves no favour at all with, with, with this. Now, they do claim, of course, that the uh, the study is is a correlation. They're not saying it's causal. Um, but there is there is a but here, because they actually put, put forward this diagram as well here, uh, where they actually point out potential causal mechanisms. And, I, and I'm not going through this at all. It's quite weak. But while they actually say um, that this is a, a correlation study, they actually do try and give some potential causal <laughs> mechanisms. Now, it's a population study. Over 11 million people. Quite how they got the data, I don't know. You and I can't get access to the data, of course. It's not public domain data. Um, but they give re these reasons why it's uh, good data and th that they attest to the validity of this data. So I think we can accept that. But um, pity that it's not op open to uh, public uh, access, therefore peer review. Um, Talking about peer review, it really makes me wonder what the peer reviewers were thinking when they looked at this article. Uh, but there's a, there's a few factors. So 72% more likely to have a, an accident if you are unvaccinated. In other words, vaccination against COVID is protecting against uh, against uh, accidents, according to this, this line of thinking. But th there's a few things to look at, and I'm going to look at this in quite a lot of detail. Uh, but not in this short video. This is just a, a bit of an introduction. So in Canada in 2021, when this data is referring to, uh, people that were unvaccinated weren't allowed to use public transport, uh, a lot of public transport in Canada anyway, planes, trains, uh, buses. So they were forced to rely on uh, cars. So they were going to be travelling more. And the unvaccinated, it turns out, in Ontario were more likely to work... Uh, sorry, the vaccinated in Ontario were more likely to work remotely. So people that were unvaccinated were more likely to have to travel in to work. And again, I've got evidence for this that's in the description. So, for example, over 65s uh, had a very low accident rate. Uh, but, of course, they don't uh, commute. They, they, they don't commute to work. Now, it turns out that this data, and they look at over 6,000 accidents, includes drivers, passengers and pedestrians. So are they seriously trying to make the point that COVID vaccination protects protest pedestrians against road traffic accidents? It really is a, bit, uh, is a bit bizarre. And there was nearly as many pedestrians involved in the study as there were drivers, as well as passengers. Um, now, they, they classed people unvaccinated uh, for 14 days after the vaccination. But the study only lasted for one month. <laughs> so so if, if people, if people had, had been vaccinated, uh, they were classed as unvaccinated for 14 days after, uh, after the vaccination. Now, um, this, this could completely, all you would need is about six like most 700 people to have been misclassified out of this over 6,000. And that will completely invalidate this data utterly, completely invalidate the results. Um, another thing that's slightly more disturbing, really, deaths at scene, when people died at the scene, were excluded. And this actually works out that it excludes 84% of the deaths in the study. Now, it, some people might think it's a bit convenient that they uh, excluded deaths at the scene because sometimes 
the road traffic accident is caused by uh, a medical emergency. So, for example, j j just say, for example, if someone, uh, a driver had myocarditis, for example, uh, and that caused a, a spontaneous ventricular fibrillation, a cardiac arrest, and that would cause the accident. And the person would be dead at scene, that their body may well be traumatised, but the cause of death would actually have occurred before the accident because of the cardiac arrest. They were excluded uh, from the study completely excluded from the study. I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions from that. Now, under vaccinated percentage in populations is usually uh, underestimated. So unvaccinated is usually underestimated uh, or people vaccinated are normally overestimated. And now that means that the rate of anything will appear higher or overestimated in people that are unvaccinated. So it doesn't matter what it is if you're comparing vaccinated and unvaccinated. So you could have, um, you could say that people, um, people who are unvaccinated have a greater liking for porridge in the morning or whatever. So because the unvaccinated percentage is usually underestimated and the vaccinated percentage is usually overestimated, the rate of anything will appear higher or overestimated in the unvaccinated, in this case, road traffic accidents. And the rate of anything will appear uh, underestimated in the vaccinated. So really, uh, quite a, um, an amusing study if it wasn't so if it wasn't so serious uh, that this actually gets into the medical literature. Really, is uh, quite uh, bemusing. And that's just a very quick romp through that. Um, I'll just point out some of the factors that the the authors uh, suggested. Uh, they suggested uh, distrusting government uh, might be a factor. In other words, people that distrusted government were more likely to be involved in road traffic accidents, as well as more less likely to be vaccinated. Um, some people might think that's offensive. Um, belief in freedom might be a factor. This awful thing, this belief in freedom, dearie me. Imagine believing in freedom, but that might be a factor that makes people less likely to be vaccinated and more likely. So people that believe in freedom are more likely to be involved in road traffic accidents. OK, uh, misconceptions of everyday risk that they are uh, purporting as an idea. They don't talk about vaccine risk. They're talking about COVID risks, of course. Uh, people that have faith in natural protection <laughs> are less likely to be vaccinated, according to their thinking and uh, more likely to be involved in a uh, traffic accident, uh, faith in natural protection. Antipathy towards regulation, chronic poverty is another factor they uh, propose. Again, saying this makes people less likely to be vaccinated, more likely to be involved in an accident. Exposure to misinformation, political identity. So are they really saying that your political identity influences your likelihood of being involved in a road traffic accident is that really what they're purporting here and this is this is in the published medical literature it really is quite incredible negative past experienced limited health literacy so all you stupid people out there who have got low uh, uh health literacy it appears that you're more likely to be involved in road traffic accidents because you don't realize that when a ton and a half of metal hits your body it can do some damage it's just incredible that this has made the literature. Um, social networks, misgiving around public health guidelines. So people that have misgivings amongst public health guidelines really don't seem to think it's a problem to walk out in front of a car. Dear me. Uh, primary care physicians who wish to help patients to avoid traffic accident statistics could take this opportunity, they say, to stress standard reminders such as wearing seatbelts, obeying speed limits and never drinking alcohol. So if you're going to drive, let me give you some advice. Wear a seatbelt, don't exceed the speed limit, oh, and don't drink and drive. Groundbreaking stuff. Um, paramedics should be aware that unvaccinated patients are overrepresented in the aftermath of a traffic crash. So all these, these people that are unvaccinated are, are really big dangers to paramedics here, according to this thinking. And they actually talk about this affecting driver insurance policies in the future. So because of this groundbreaking research, we now realise that people that are unvaccinated against COVID-19 are more likely to have road traffic accidents. Therefore, we should increase their insurance premiums. Are they really saying this? Anyway, that's just a few things about that. I'm going to look at it in a bit more detail because I'm aware I haven't given my full uh, sort of uh, level of evidence. So we'll be giving all the references for this. But I'm going to do that as a separate video because it is quite, 
complicated but there there we go um needless to say we don't accept the <laughs> the uh this contention that uh covid19 is uh associated with uh fairly to take covid19 vaccine is associated with increased risk of road traffic accidents and uh it's done the medical literature and the credibility of science no good at all in my view that this has been published so we'll leave that there for now um the next, I'm going to do this in detail uh, straight away while it's all still fresh in my head. If you want to watch it, do check out the next video for all the detail. For now, thank you for watching.